consider the following statements with reference to the Ajanta Caves. Ajanta Caves were constructed in two phases. The caves of the first phase are classified under the early Hinayan Buddhism, which grew under the Shatavahana patronage and the second phase attributed to the theistic Mahayana tradition, flourished mostly under the rule of Vakataka king Harisena. Among the 29 caves, five were developed during the Hinayana phase while the remaining during the Mahayana phase of Buddhism. Sculpture of Mahapari Nirvana of Buddha has been found in cave number 26 of Ajanta Caves. This massive sculpture is 24 feet long and 9 feet tall. It is themed on the passing away of the Buddha. In this sculpture, the Buddha is reclining on his right side and behind him are two sala trees. On the basis of the sculpture are shown in uh, shown his begging bowl, water pitcher and walking stick. Ananda and the other disciples are shown sitting in mourning. Sculpted on top are celestials who are rejoicing because of Buddha's arrival in heaven. Second question. Consider the following statement with regard to the stupa architecture. Stupas were burial mounds prevalent in India from the Vedic period. It is a conventional representation of a funeral cumulus in which relics and ashes of the dead were kept. Although a Vedic tradition, where stupas were popularized by the Buddhist, after the death of Buddha, nine stupas were erected. Eight of them had the relics of Buddha at their Meji, while the ninth had a pot in which the relics were originally kept. During the period of Ashoka, the art of stupas reached its climax. Almost 84,000 stupas were erected during his period. During Ashoka's period, bricks as well as wood were used in the construction of stupas. Sanchi stupa was built during the reign of Ashoka using bricks. Later, it was covered with stone and many new additions were made. Toranas were the gateways of the stupa. Not the circu circumambulatory pa passageway. Four beautifully decorated toranas were found in Sanchi Stupa. The engraving of on these toranas depict various events from the life of Buddha and Jataka stories. Circumambulatory passageway or Pradakshinapata was, was used by the devotees for taking a walk around the stupa as a token of worship. Sanchi stupa in Madhya Pradesh is the most famous of the Ashokan stupa. Piprava stupa in Uttar Pradesh is the oldest one. Post Mauryan architectural constitutions. Brahat stupa in Uttar Pradesh, the Torana at Sanchi stupa, etc. Question number 3. In context of history of architecture in India, consider the following pairs. Uh, Arasavali. Arasavali Sun Temple is a 7th century AD Sun Temple at Arasavali in Andhra Pradesh, India. It is believed that temple was built by King Devendra Verma, ruler of the Kalinga dynasty. The temple is built in such a way that the early morning rays of the sun fall on the feet of the Deity twice a year in Uttarayana March 9 to 11th and in Dakshinayana October 1 to 3rd. Even when the five entrances gates are closed. Amar Kantak. Amar Kantak is a pilgrim town in Madhya Pradesh. It is place known for the emergence of Narmada River, Son River, Tohila River. It is best known for the ancient temples of Kalachuri period, Omkareshwara. Omkareshwara is the Hindu temple dedicated to God Shiva. It is one of the 12 river Jyotirlinga shrine of Shiva. It is located on an island called Mandhata on Shivpuri on Narmada in Madhya Pradesh. Th fourth question. With reference to temple architecture in India, consider the following statements. Nagara style of temple architecture evolved re regionally in different regions like in Odisha, Kujraho and Rajasthan etc. 
Odisha school usually had boundary wall and beautifully carved exterior walls in this school mandapa and shikara are known as jagan mohan and jewel respectively the theme of gujaraho school is generally erotic in nature based on kama sutra literature this school evolved under the patronage of chandela rulers of gujaraho during 982180 these temples developed on higher platform and panchayatna style was followed solanki school of temple architecture was also known as maru gujara style this school developed under the patronage of solanki rulers of gujarat and rajasthan during 1180 and 1380 it was not fundamentally different from gujraho and had main features like minute and lovely decorative carvings mostly sand stone and gray black basalt were are used for temple construction question number 5 consider the following statement with regard to ellora caves the buddhist cave in ellora consists of viharas or monasteries that include living quarters sleeping quarters kitchen etc for the monks vishwakarma cave is the most famous cluster of carved halls it is also known as the carpenter's cave or surat sutarka jopta sutarka jopta buddhist sculpture seated in the position of vitarka mudra or vyakyayan mudra signifies teaching discussion and intellectual argument discovered in the vishwakarma cave of the complex cave number 30 to th- uh, 30 34 in Ellora belongs to the Jains. Jagannath Sabha is the group of five Jain cave temples in the Ellora complex were built in the 9th century by the Rashtrakuta rulers. All the Jain caves belong to the Digambara sect and illustrate their philosophy and tradition. Question number 6. Consider the following statements with regard to the Indo-Gothic style of architecture. in indo gothic style of architecture the walls were thinner than uh, in the indo islamic constructions it was a unique blend of indian persian and gothic style of architecture it was british who brought with them the gothic style of architecture it merged with the indian architecture and resulted in the indo gothic style of architecture in indo gothic style of architecture arches were pointed unlike the curving arches of indo islamic era and walls with large windows question number 7 consider the following statement in context of evolution of temple architecture in ancient india in the first stage of development temples had flat roof but not a covered ambulatory passage way around garbhagriha temples of this stage are were square in shape and were built on lower platform with shallow pillared approach the second stage temples had a covered ambulatory passage way around garbhagriha in the second stage temples contain most of the features of the first stage along with a new one like built on higher and upraised platform presence of two stored temples a covered ambulatory passage way around garbhagriha in the third stage temples were constructed based on panchayatna style in panchayatna style of temple making there were four subsidiary shrines along with the temple of principal deity on a crucified ground plan the third stage saw the emergence of shikaras on the top of temples in place of flat roof question number 8 consider the following statement with regards to the edicts of ashoka these edicts attest are to ashoka's effort to maintain peace and promote the ideas of buddhism far and wide every single one of ashoka's pillar was installed in the buddhist monasteries as well as a number of significant locations associated with the buddha's life and locations frequented by pilgrims 
on a few of the columns you will find inscriptions that are directed towards the nuns and monks who live there edicts of ashoka have multiple scripts prakrit inscriptions were written in brahmi and karosti script the inscription found in the area of pakistan are, are in karosti script and other edicts were written in greek and aramaic sorry arabic Ashoka Pillar Edicts The spotted white sandstone that originates from Mathura and the buff colored sandstone and squads that originate from Amaravati are both utilized sandstone er extracted from Chunar's mines is often used in the construction of the pillar in terms of both the shape and the size they are virtually indistinguishable from one another Each of the pillars is a monolith which is a sand which is a stone carving and its surface has been well polished they were found in kandhara which is located in afghanistan khyber pantu pantunkwa which is located in pakistan delhi vaishali and champaran which are located in bihar sarnath and alhabad which are located in uttar pradesh Amravati which is located in Andhra Pradesh and Sanchi which is located in Bihar question number 9 consider the following statement with regard to nagara style of temple architecture latina pamsana and valhabi styles of are three sub types of nagara style based on the shikaras latina or reka prasad style of shikara is square at base and curve and has curvy linear walls Pamsana style had a broader base and shorter in height than Latina type whereas Vallabhi style have rectangular base with roof rising into a vaulted chambers a pyramidal structure called vimana in is used at the top of the temple in southern india it is a unique feature of dravidian style whereas shikara is used as a crowning element at the top of the temple in nagara style they are mountain like spire of the of a free standing temple which has a cur- curving shape or curved inwards or curves inwards nagara style of temple did not have water tank or reservoir uh, and an elaborately boundary wall around temple These are the features of Dravidian style of temple architecture. Question number 10. Consider the following statement with regard to Vijayanagara school of temple architecture. The rulers of Vijayanagara empire from 1335 to 1565 CE combined the features of Chola, Hoysala, Pandyas, Chalukyas architectural style. Groups of monuments at Ampi is a prime example of this architecture. The concept of secular buildings inside the temple premises was introduced during the Vijayanagara Empire. For example, Lotus Mahal. Under this school of architecture, the buildings began to be influenced by the Indo-Islamic architectural style. For example, many features of Bijapur Indo-Islamic architecture can be found in vijayanagara temple under this school the gopurams or huge gateways were constructed on all sides of the complex earlier they were constructed only on the front side no knowledge base some of the features are first point the walls of the temples were highly decorated with carvings and geometrical patterns second point monolithic rock pillars can be seen these uh, the enclosing walls also were larger third point temple pi- temple pillars had a mythical creatures yali engraved in them more than one mandapas were built in each temple the central mandapa came to be known as kalyana mandapa dedicated to divine marriage fifth point temple complex was enclosed by boundaries now let us study few mcqs based on sculpture first question consider the following statements with regard to amara amaravati school of art first point it puts more emphasis on narrative art depicting life stories of buddha and 
Jataka tells than the usual features of Buddha. Second point, it was developed under the patronage of Shatavana rulers. Both the points are correct. While the Gandhara and Madhura school focuses on single images, Amaravati school put more emphasis on the use of dynamic images or narrative art. Since the sculptures are generally part of narrative art, there is less emphasis on the individual features of Buddha. The sculptures of Amaravati school generally depict life stories of Buddha and the Jataka tales, that is the previous lives of Buddha in both human and animal form. Amaravati school of art developed in the Krishna Godavari lower valley in and around Amaravati and Nagarjun Konda under the patronage of Shatavahana rulers. It was developed indigenously and was not influenced by external culture. Second question comes the following statement with regard to the Indian sculpture. The climate of Indian subcontinent which makes the long term survival of organic materials challenging results in the majority of the sculpture of Indian subcontinent being made of stone, metals or terracotta. This is partly owing to the fact that these materials are more durable than organic element. The Indus Valley civilization which flourished from 3300 to 1700 BCE is credited with producing the first sculpture found on the Indian subcontinent. There is also the well-known small bronze dancing girl among them. Ceramic figurines and stone seals which generally depict animals and di or deities in fine detail outweigh bronze and stone figures which are very scarce. These figures typically show a great deal of detail. After the after a rough beginning all the major Indian faiths had developed the use of sacred culture by the beginning of popular era and the use of stone was becoming more popular. Stone was also being used more frequently. Question number 3. Consider the following statement with regard to sculpture during the Indus Valley Civilization. Both Kalimbangan and Daimabad have been found to have important examples of sculpture made by casting metal. In addition to sculpture made of metal, sculptures craft, crafted out of terracotta have also been found in this location. Examples of these that were well known include the mother goddess, toy, cart, toy carts of, with wheels, visuals, uh, various birds and animals and so on. The majority of the images served a religious or ceremonial functions in the same in some capacity the procedures of casting metal was also utilized for the production of items that were utilized on the daily basis such as utensils question number four this is the following statements with regard to shatavahana sculpture the shatavahana dynasty ruled most of the deccan and the se uh, several surrounding regions most notably Maharashtra from the 2nd century BCE until the 2nd century CE. They were particularly successful in controlling the Deccan. They were a Buddhist dynasty and the Sanchi and the and Amaravati Stupas in addition to the to a few rocket monuments are most noteworthy examples of sculptures that uh, that they sponsored throughout their reign. During the reign of Shatavahanas, the Amaravati school of Buddhist art flourished. The various limestone sculpture and tablets that were once plastered Buddhist stupas provided a fascinating view into one of the three major Buddhist culture centers along with Mathura and Gandhara. Between the 2nd century BCE and the 2nd century CE, under the Shatavana, several Buddhist cave temples emerged along the coastal areas of Maharashtra. These cave temples were decorated with sculptures from the Shatavana era, providing not only some of the earliest art 
depictions but also evidence of ancient Indian architecture. Question number 5. Consider the following statement with regard to Pallava dynasty art and sculpture. During the 9th and 11th centuries, the Chandela dynasty was responsible for the construction of Kujraho temples which are a complex of Hindu and Jain temples. They are considered to be among the most outstanding specimens of art and architecture in all of India. In each of the temples, there is a collection of finely carved statues that can be viewed depicted despite the fact that the temple is known for its sexually suggestive sculptures less than a tenth of the temple sculpture is focused on sexual themes. Uh, the Pallava dynasty was the first dynasty in the southern India to leave stone sculpture on a huge scale after the Gundimalam Lingam. This dynasty ruled most of the southeast India and was responsible for the majority of the country's sculpture made of stone. There are only a few significant Hindu temples that have tremendous cultural adornment still standing today. The majority of the group of monuments at Mahabalipuram which date back to the 7th and 8th centuries and are possibly the most well-known examples of Pallava art and architecture were carved into the rock at the beginning. The descent of the Gang Ganges located in Mahabalipuram is known as the India's largest and the more ornate sculptural composition. It is a relief that was carved on the nearly vertical rock wall and features hundreds of figures, one of which is a life life-size elephant. This relief dates back to the late 7th century. The natural rock outcropping on which many of them are built are stripped away on all sides until just the sculpture is left. Others such as the Shore Temple are constructed in the conventional manner. Question number 6. Consider the following statement with regard to Gandhara school of art. The sculptural tradition in Gandhara had the confluence of Bactria, Parthia and local Gandhara tradition. Due to a heavy influence of Greek or Hellenistic sculpture, the image of Buddha and Bodhisattva were based on the Greco-Roman Pathion and resembled that of Ap Apollo. Hence, this school is also referred to as Indo-Greek art. In the Gandhara school, the Buddha is known is shown in a spiritual state with wavy air. He wears fewer ornaments and seated in a position of a yogi. The eyes are off closed as in meditation. A, a protuberance is shown on the head, signifying the omni om om omniscience of Buddha. Gandhara school of art got patronage of Kushana rulers. This school reached its pinnacle under the reign of Kanishka from 127 to 151 AD. It was in Mathura school of art that red sandstone was used. Gandhara school flourished in two stages between 50 BC and 500 AD. The Gandhara school used grey stone, bluish grey stone, mud and stuc stucco. Question number 7. Lingaraja temple was constructed in the 11th century AD. It is perhaps the most marvelous temple even erected in this century. The grandest and the loftiest, that is about 36.50 meter high, mark the culmination of architectural activities at Bhubaneswar. Next, rock cut, rock cut elephant at Dhauli was built during the reign of Ashoka in 3rd century BC. Varaha image at Udaigiri is a Gupta era image probably constructed between 3rd and 6th century AD. Question number 8. Consider the following statement with regard to different pillar inscriptions of ancient India. 
द मेहरा मेहरावली इन आयरन पिल्लर इंस्क्रिप्शन मेन्शन्स चंद्रगुप्ता विक्रमादित्य अथॉरिटी ओवर नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न इंडिया एंड द गुड पोर्शन ऑफ बेंगाल इट मेन्शन्स चंद्रगुप्ता विक्ट्री ओवर एनिमीज फ्रॉम वंगा दट इज बेंगाल दिस पिल्लर वॉज एस्टैब्लिश्ड बाय चंद्रगुप्ता एज विष्णुपादा इन द ऑनर ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु The Allahabad pillar inscription enumerates the achievement of Samudra Gupta. The pillar that bears the inscription of Allahabad is known as an Ashoka Stamba. It was built by Emperor Ashoka of the Maurya dynasty, which reigned around the third century BCE. The inscription on the Allahabad pillar, sometimes referred to as the Allahabad. Prashasti is considered to be one of the most significant pieces of epigraphic evidence pertaining to the imperial guptas despite the fact that it is one of the few existing pillars with his edicts on it the fact that is also contains following inscription that are attributed to the gupta king samudra gupta makes it particularly notable question number 9 Consider the following statement with regard to Hathi Gumpha. Hathi Gumpha. The Hathi Gumpha inscription are the historical records of the event in the King Karavela's reign. It throws light not only on political episodes but also on religious, cultural, and social conditions of Kalinga during the period. They were developed during the rule of King Karavela of Kalinga in 2nd century BC to 1st century CE. It presented in Kavya style and in the language Brahmi. The Athi Gumpha inscription is like the history of Karavela as a king, a conqueror, a patron of culture and a champion of Jainism. The inscription are located in the hills of Udaygiri and Gandhagiri near Bhubaneswar. The hills are famous since ancient times as the Kumari Parvata and the Kumara Parvata respectively for their religious sanctity. According to Jaina tradition, Mahavira Jaina came to the Kumari hill from where he preached his doctrine. Since then, the hill has become sacred centre of Jainism. Question number 10. Consider the following statement with respect with regards to Mathura school of art. In Mathura school of art, Buddha is shown to be surrounded by two bodhisattvas, Padmapani holding a lotus and Vajrapani holding a thunderbolt. Buddha with the two bodhisattvas in the Mathura school, we find that the image of Buddha is modeled on the lines of earlier Yaksha image found during the Mauryan period. Also, the hollow around the head of the Buddha is larger than in Gandhara school and is decorated with geometric patterns. From Hinduism, image of Vaish, uh, Vaishnava, mainly Vishnu and his various forms and Shaiva, uh, mainly the uh, through Lingas and Mukhalingas are found in the Mathura school. This school also makes a striking use of symbolism in the images since the Hindu gods Vishnu and Shiva were represented using their ayudas, that is weapons. Mathura school also produced artwork associated with Jainism. For instance, images of early Jaina Tirthankaras are found from Mathura. The head, headless sculpture of Kushana ruler Kanishka found in Mathura is said to have belonged to the Mathura school of art along with the Gandhara school. The Kushana rulers also patronized the Mathura school of art. Let us study few MCQs on pottery. First question. Consider the following statements with regard to pottery tradition in India. In the early villages of Meharagra, remnants of pottery dating back to the time of the Indus Valley civilization have been discovered. In modern times, it has evolved into a cultural art form that is still widely practiced across India. The study of culture and the process of 
reconstructing the past both make significant use of pottery throughout history many cultures have been associated with a variety of ceramic styles it is important to archaeologists and the historians show uh, historians because it shows the social economic and environmental conditions that a civilization thrived in which helps them comprehend our history it is of tremendous importance in gaining a knowledge of societies in which script was either non existent non existent or is still not fully disappeared question number 2 consider the following statement with regard to the pottery art of the indus valley a large quantity of pottery excavated from the sites enable us to understand the gradual evolution of various designs motif as employed in different shapes and style the indus valley pottery consists chiefly of very fine wheel made wares very few being handmade polychrome pottery is very rare and often consists of small vases ornamented with geometric patterns in red black and green and very seldom white and yellow plain pottery is more common than painted ware plain pottery is generally of red clay with or without a fine red or gray slip it includes knobbed ware ornamented with row of knobs the black painted ware has a fine coating of red slip on which geometric and animal designs were executed in a glossy black paint question number 3 consider the following statement with regard to the pottery of the vedic age the pottery during the civilization of indus valley one of the pottery tradition practiced at the time was polished ware examples of the pottery having a rough surface include harappa burial pottery orch colored pottery black on red pottery black on gray pottery gray ware and painted gray ware hence rough surface pottery was used during the indus valley civilization not during the vedic age examples of pottery tradition that were practiced during vedic period include the painted gray ware style the north uh, northern black polished ware style and the megalithic pottery that was unearthed in kerala question number 4 consider the following statement with regard to the evolution of pottery making in india in the beginning of the neolithic age handmade pottery was used but during the later period a foot wheel was also used the earliest remarkable examples of handmade pottery date back to the early neolithic period they were either monochromatic or polished and their decorations include incised impressed as well as painted pattern however the most impressive specimens of painted embellishment date back to the middle neolithic period the emergence of the variety of ceramic cultures is one of the defining characteristics of the chalcolithic age examples of this include pottery with black and red ware black on red black on red ware and orch orcher colored pottery pottery for household purpose is found in as many shapes and sizes as could be con- conceived for considered of for daily practical use straight and angular shapes are an exception while graceful curves are the rule miniature vessels mostly less than half an inch in height are particularly so marvelously crafted as a evoke admiration question number 5 consider the following statement with regard to orchre colored pottery ocp culture because of the orchre color rubs off when the pottery is handled the ocp pottery had a red slip it seems to be an orchre hue 
because of this the ocp pottery is referred to as osher colored pottery it has designs painted in black on it jars storage jars bowls and basins are the various forms of the ocp can be found in because of the ocp sites produced figures and artifacts made of copper the culture is often referred to as copper hoard culture it is a rural culture and the and rice barley and legume cultivation are evident they also practiced pastro pastoralism as evident by the presence of dogs horses pigs sheep and cattle they were wattle and dog homes in the village they used ornamentation made of terracotta and copper <coughs> animal statues have also been discovered question number 6 consider the following statement with regard to black and red ware culture pottery from the harappan period there are two main categories of pottery that can be found at excavation site plain pottery and the painted pottery because of the glossy black paint was used to depict pattern and figures on the red black drop red backdrop the painted pottery is also known as red and black pottery three primary uses of the pottery were as follows first part simple pottery was used for domestic use namely for the storing of food and liquid small bowls usually no large, larger than half an inch were employed as decoration a large hole in the bottom of the numerous uh, and a numerous hole spanning the sides could be found in some of the ceramics they could have been utilized uh, to strain alcohol between the painted gray ware and the ocp is black and red ware pottery known as black and red ware is distinguished by having two different surface colors black on the inside and outside uh, rim and the red on the outside the the reversed firing method is used to create this color combination the black and red ware sites Uh, were both characteristics by their larger factory sites though they produce some jewelry meth- um, jewelry made of made of shell copper carn carni lime and terracotta and were characterized by subsistence agriculture that is cultivation of rice barley and legumes brw that is uh, black and red ware pottery and the late harappan pottery have been linked to various locations particularly in the eastern punjab and gujarat question number 7 in the context of the history of pottery in india consider the following facts arch archray colored pottery the archray colored pottery culture is an indo gangetic plain civilization from the second millennium bc that is approximately 2600 bce to 1200 bce spanning from eastern punjab to northeastern rajasthan and the western uttar pradesh it belonged to early vedic period painted graver the painted graver culture is an iron age culture that existed in the western gangetic plain and the ghagra hakra valley it lasted from approximately 1200 bce to 600 bce which uh, probably corresponds to the middle and the late vedic period that is the kuru panchala kingdom this kingdom was the first large state to emerge in south asia following the collapse of the indus valley civilization red ware gupta pottery remains unearthed at the achi chhatra rajagriha astinapur and basra provide an outstanding proof of the superiority of the art from of pottery the red ware was the most characteristic type of pottery produced during this time period question number 8 comes the following statement with regard to the painted gray ware culture the painted gray ware culture is an iron age culture that existed in the western gangetic plain and 
Ghagra Hakra Valley. It lasted from approximately 1200 BCE to 600 BCE, which probably corresponds to the middle of the late Vedic period, that is Kuru Panchala Kingdom. This kingdom was the first large state in South Asia after the decline of the Indus Valley Civilization. The pottery discovered at the excavation sites did not fall into any of these three categories they were uh, when they were categorized. The only category that existed is painted gravel. It is co contemporary with the continents of the black and red veil culture in the eastern Gangetic Plain and the central India. And it is the successor of the black and red veil culture that existed with this region. Region. The culture known uh, culture phase known as painted grey ware is succeeded by the northern black polished ware culture, which is a link to the Mahajanapadas and Mauryan period. Question number nine. Consider the following statement with regards to the northern black polished ware. The term northern black polished ware is commonly used to refer the pottery that was produced during the Mauryan period. In general, they were considered to be the luxury objects due to the glossy black paint that was used on them and they and the way that they were finished. During the time period of the Indus Valley civilization, polished ware was used for the very first time. This northern black polished ware is not distinguished by a significant amount of, uh, of either a weak or prominent presence of color like red and blue. In general, they were considered to be luxury object due to the glossy black paint that was used on them and the way that they were finished. They, were, they are frequently considered to represent the pinnacle of the achievement of in the field of ceramics. The term northern black polished ware is commonly used to refer the pottery that was produced during the Mauryan period. In general, they were considered to be luxury objects due to the glossy black paint that was used on them and the way that they were finished. They are frequently considered to represent the pinnacle of the achievement in the field of ceramics. In the common parallels, early red polished ware is associated with the northern black polished ware and its origins can be traced back to the 3rd century BC. Question number 10. In the context of the history of India, consider the following pairs. The Ahar Banas culture. The Ahar Banas culture was a Chalcolithic archaeological society that existed on the bank of the Aha River in the southeastern Rajasthan state in India from around 3000 BC to 1200 BC. This culture was contemporary with the Indus Valley civilization and was located in close proximity to it. The Ahar Banas people who lived in the region bordered with by the Banas Bridge and the Aha rivers utilized the copper ores found in the Aravali range to fashion axes and other types of tools. They subsisted on the variety of crops, the most important of, uh, of which were wheat and barley. The design motifs used on the sails are typically relatively straightforward and they share numerous parallels with other locations associated with the Indus civilization. Kunan culture. In, in, in India's Harappan province, the Kunal culture is distinct for its native ceramics and arch architectural designs. A hoard of pot holding decorative made of silver, gold leaf and beads made of semi-precious stones is evidence of interaction and commerce with the Harappan society. The oldest phase which is 4000 BC old predicts the 3000 BC early Harappan site of Rahman Dheri. Next, Amri Nal culture. The culture of the Amri Nal Amri is Sindh and Nal in Balochistan, both in Pakistan are dual type sites that date to the 4th 
and third millennium BC. Amri saw non-Harappan period between 6000 to 4000 BC as well as the later Harappan phase up and up until 1300 BCE. Few MCQs on painting. First question. Consider the following statements with regard to the paintings in Ajanta Caves. Paintings have a lot of typological variations. Outward projections are used in the Ajanta paintings of the 5th century CE. Lines are clearly defined and are very rhythmic. Sorry, rhythmic. Body color gets merged with the outer line creating the effect of volume. The figurines are heavy like the sculpture of western India. Events are grouped together according to geographical location. Tied horizontally arranged figures appear as a convenient choice of the artisans. Separations of geographic locations has been indicated by using outward architectural band. Question number two. Consider the following statements with regard to rock paint in ancient India. Rock paint in India were first discovered by an archaeologist Archibald Carley in 1867 to 68. The caves of Bhim Betka were discovered by V.S. Wakanakar in 1957 or 58. The themes of the painting found here were of great variety ranging from mundane events of daily life of those times to sacred and royal images of like hunting, dancing, music, horse, elephant ride. Hunting was mainly painted with red, dancers in green etc. The paints were made by grinding various rocks and minerals. So use of colors in these paintings was decided by theme and local atmosphere. The more commonly used color in these paints were red, green, white, yellow, black, orange, purple and brown were not used. Sorry, sorry. The commonly used color in these paints were red, green, white, yellow, black, orange, purple and brown were not used. Gray was used on rare occasion. The then artist got red color from the hematite known as Geru in India. The green color from the from a green uh, from a green variety of the stones called chal chalcedony. White color was made out of limestone. This yellow, black, orange, purple, and brown not these colors not used. Question number three. Consider the following statements with regard to Rogan hut. It is a it is an old tradition of hand painting on cloth practiced in the Kutch region in Gujarat. It is practiced by Katharias Kathar Khatri's family in Gujarat. It uses paint made up of castor oil and natural colors. Castor oil is heated and the cast of into cold water and a thick residue is mixed with natural color then uh, using the stylus or blocks this resultant paint is meticulously transferred on to the cloth to make floral animal uh, and geometric pattern question number four consider the following statement with regard to the mural and miniature painting centrality is one of the main feature of the mural painting so that attention is at once drawn to the most important person in each scene. For example, the painters of Ajanta had realized the true glory of the Buddha. The story of the whole life whose life was employed here by them as a motive to explain the eternal pattern of human life. The stories illustrated here are continuous and elaborate presenting the drama of ancient India enacted in the palaces of the king and in the hamlets of the common people equally engaged in the quest for the beautiful and spiritual values of life. Because of the sheer size of the mural painting, they cannot be contained on paper and cloth. 
so they were painted on the walls of large structure usually caves and temple walls and not on clothes and paper mural painting can be dated between 2nd century bc and the 10th century ad while miniature painting de painting developed between 9th and 11th century ad murals are large work executed on the walls of solid structure directly as in the ajanta caves and kailasha temple of ellora miniature painting are executed on a very small scale for books or album on perishable material such as paper and cloth the art of miniature painting reached its glory during mogal period question number 5 consider the following statement with regard to the painting of ajanta caves number 1 and 2 The paintings of the cave number one and two are very orderly, naturalistic, well integrated with the sculpture in the cave. Architectural setting is simple, and the arrangements of the figure is delineated in the circular form to create the dimensionality and the special effects. Different guilds of the artisans seem to have worked on the painting of these caves, which can be inferred from that. typological and style stylistic variations naturalistic posture and uh, unexaggerated facial features are used as exceptional types elongated half closed eyes are used the typological stylistic variants in the painting of these caves suggest that various guilds of artisans have been contributed to them an aggressive face characteristics and naturalistic posture are used as exceptional kinds the themes of the paintings are the event from the life of buddha the jataka and the avadanas some paintings such as simhala avadana mahajataka sorry mahajanaka jataka vidru pandi pandita jataka cover the entire wall of the cave it is worthy noting that cha chadanta jataka have been painted in the early cave number 10 with many details and events grouped according to their geographical location question number 6 consider the following paints and the state that they belong to thanga thang ka painting it is a traditional tibetan painting buddha painting are created in this style of art on cotton or silk fabrics it is divided into three categories ceremonies and everyday practice glimpses of into buddhist lifestyle and tibetan buddhist wall painting kalamkari painting the term kalamkari can be translated as painting made by the use of pen which uh, is also its literally meaning machili patnam where which is located in the krishna district of andhra pradesh is the home of the large number of fans produced in the certain region of india this style of cotton textile can be hand painted or block printed using wooden stencils next patha chitra painting it is an example of audition folk art work the life of lord krishna is depicted in this painting and the subjects like subhadra balram lord jagannatha dashavatara and the scenes from his childhood they were represented by a deep outline and the colors red yellow orange white and black respectively question number 7 consider the following statements with regard to the technique and the style of mural painting Mural is the only form of painting that is truly three dimensional since it modifies the partics of the given space in true fresco method the paintings are done when the surface wall is still wet so that the pigments go deep inside the wall surface in fresco sesco methods painting are done on the lime plaster surface uh, which has been allowed to dry first and then drench with the fresh lime water on the surface thus obtain the artistic proce pro proceeded to sketch out his composition true fresco is the most durable method of painting mural since the pigments are completely fused with the damp plaster ground 
or to become an integral part of the wall surface. Fresco sesco is the oldest known painting medium surviving in the uh, prehistoric cave mural decorations in the fresco sesco or the lime painting method. The plastered surface of the wall is soaked with slaked lime. The lime resistant pigment are applied swiftly before the plaster sets. Sesco colors dry lighter than the tone of the time of application producing the pale matte chalky quality of the distempered wall although the pigments are fused with the surface they are not completely absorbed and may flake with time question number 8 consider the following statement with regard to the upper up pub Brahmsa school of art. The upper Brahmsa school of art or a Jaina school of art or simply known as the Western Indian school of art is a predominant school of art in Western India during 11th to 15th century. It grew as a reaction to the great mural paintings of Ajanta along with Pala school of art. The upper Brahmsa school of art brought in the concept of Gita Govinda and secular love into these paintings that were otherwise dominated by the Jain iconography. From about 1100 to 1400 AD, palm leaves were used for the manuscript and later on paper was introduced for the purpose, the Kalpa Sutra and the Kalaka Charya Katha. The two very popular Jain texts were repeatedly written and illustrated with painting. The common theme of these paintings were Jain and in the later period the Vaishnava school appro appropriated them to Buddhism was not the theme of this painting as Jainism was the main force behind the artistic creativity from 1961 AD to the end of 13th century patronized by the Chalukya rulers. Question number 9. Consider the following statement with regard to the Bijapur school of miniature painting. Bijapur school painting was patronized by Adil Shah, Ali Adil Shah I that is from 1058 to 80 AD and his successor Ibrahim II. The manuscript Najum al-Ulm Science of Stars sorry, Stars of Science contains 876 min miniatures. Once of once one of the miniature illustrate here shows the throne of prosperity. There is influence of the Lepakshi mural paintings on the female types. The rich color scheme, the palm trees, animals and the men, women all belong to the Dekhani tradition. The purpose use of gold color, some flowering plants and arabesque on the top of the throne are derived from the Persian tradition. Question number 10. Consider the following statement with regard to miniature painting. Pala school of miniature painting. It is, it is this school that owns the 8th century AD artwork. This style placed a strong emphasis on the use of color symbolism and the topics were frequently drawn from Buddhist Tantric ceremonies. Buddhist temples including Nalanda, Somapura, Mahavira, Odantapura and Vikramashali, Vikramashila uh, have preserved pictures of the Buddha and the other god painted on palm leaves. Every year thousands of students visited the location to learn about the idea, the technique and how different colors are combined in a single picture. These school paintings are highly well linked in Sri Lanka, Nepal, Burma, Tibet and Southeast Asian nation. The Jaina school of miniature painting rose to popularity in the 11th century AD as miniature painting of holy scripts like the Kalpa Sutra and Kalkacharya Katha were produced. This school employed natural materials such as gold and silver to illustrate the stories. The primary distinguishable characteristics of this school are the representation of magnified eyes and with square shapes and portrayals of elegant characters. The Tirthankaras, male figures and goddesses were frequently shown in the painting using hues like green, 
crimson, gold, and blue. Goddesses' paintings were frequently displayed in this school with elaborate ornamentation. The late 16th century saw a decrease in the quality of these paintings. Rajasthan School of Miniature Painting The Rajasthani school was established in response to the fall of the Mughal miniature painting. The Rajput emperors had the same passion of art as the Mughal emperors and supported miniature painting. The color that are taken from plants, minerals, shells, gold, silver, precious stones are frequently bold and contrasted in nature. Only delicate brushes were employed for the preparation of the pigments which frequently took weeks. The Bhakti movement of medieval, medieval India and Hinduism served as the inspiration for the artwork produced by this school. With the exception of a few shared elements such as the portrayals of Ramayana stories and the regal lifestyles of king and queen. This school is built in the distinctive manner of the several Rajputana kingdom. Let us study few MCQs on handicrafts. First question. Consider the following statements with regard to the handicrafts in India. Bell metal products of Chhattisgarh are famous all over the world, especially the bell metal cows. The artifacts prepared from Dhokra technique is uh, Dhokra technique of this art use the cow dung, paddy husk and soil uh, red soil in the preparation. Bee wax being the most important one. Apart from countering, wax wires are also used for decoration purpose and for giving the finishing touch to artifacts. Odisha and the West Bengal are important centers of Dhokra casting which is used for ornaments made of brass. Dhokra art is especially sorry <coughs> essentially stunning metal figurine fashioned uh, from bronze and copper based alloys using a lost wax casting the initial object of kauna handicraft was to serve the community kauna items were mostly simple in form with an occasional splash of color added for ornamental gifting Mats, beads and pillows are the most widely purchased items in Manipur since that is the traditional way of furnishing a room in which people gather for socializing, working and eating. The art of crafting with the count shell is one of the most distinctive and visual stunning forms of handicraft that can be found in West Bengal. In reality, it is an art form that involves ca carving beautiful motifs into natural shells that have been collected from the ocean. Crafts made from conch shell are not only lovely and intricate but according to Hindu mythology, they also hold a special place among the most fortunate of objects. Question number 2. In the context of the handicraft in India, consider the following pairs. Hamarmi 4. The Mizo people have a well-known and widely used traditional textile called Hamaram. It is a delicate garment that is reserved for the use of ladies and little girls. The lower part of the body is hidden by the wrapping of of the fabric around the waist and being secured by tuckling it in it in at the waist. It is customary to wear uh, it when participating in festive dance and age old custom. Idu Mishmi Textile The Idu Mishmi have a long history of using backstrap looms to weave a variety of textile. 2019 marked the year that Idu textile was granted GI tag. Prior to beginning the weaving process, the thread mixer that is ma managed by hands is used to intertwine a variety of colored threads. The loom is locally known as 
thakkar and sorry thakkar and each part has its own name sambal horn craft the horn bone handicraft that are produced in a city of sambal in the indian state of uttar pradesh are extremely popular the fact that the raw material of these handy hand, handmade items are obtained from dead animal contributes to the environmentally benign nature of this sector of the economy products made from horn and bone that sambal export are well known in many part of the world question number 3 consider the following statement with regard to glassware handicraft the archaeological evidence of glass industry was found in brahmapuri and kolhapur in maharashtra which was operation which was operation between 2 bc to 2 ad and produced specialized glassware called lecticular beads the moguls did gave patronage to the art of glassware and utilized it in decorating their monuments like the shishti mahal shisha mahal like the shisha mahal but they were not the first one so for the earliest evidence of glass beads in india is reported from bhagwan pura in the harappan painted graver overlap face once the production of the glass became glass came into being the domination of the semi precious stone declined and the beads of glass in various shapes size and colors could be manufactured question number 4 consider the following statement with regard to arumbavur wood carving arumbavur wood carving is done at arumbavur and around the vepanathai taluk of perambalur district tamil nadu the wood carving are primarily made out of wooden logs of indian series lingam tree mango indian ash tree neem and rose wood tree it was it was granted geographical indication tag by the geographical indications registry in may 2020 the carving of the arambavur wood carvings are often inspired by architectural detail of temple sculpture and carvings being carved out of a single block of wood great attention and care is required along with no ordinary amount of skills and fineness the creating details given that a single error could damage the entire piece question number 5 consider the following statement with regard to bidriware art bidri bidri art is counted among the most popular form of metal work that dwells in various form the bidri work done in the bidri village of karnataka is very famous for its beauty it uses silver to create inlay work uh, against dark background this creates an in- ex- elusive and stark contrast for the shining silver work the craft is not restricted to designing of metal alloys alone the same designs are also made on cloth using embroidery technique a silver embroidery is made on black cloth using stitches and other elements this work uses the same material as that of the zardozi work bidri art work was introduced in india by the bahmani sultan who resigned who reigned over the bidar lands during the 13th to 15th centuries there has been no change in the manufacturing process of bidri art since its inception the persian iranians and syrians are believed to be the to believed to be the have introduced this art to the world question number 6 comes the following statement with regard to amroha dholak Natural wood is used in the making of amroha dholak a musical instrument the dholak is traditionally crafted out of mango wood jack wood or teak wood hollow blocks of all sizes and shapes are carved from mango and shisham wood using traditional indian techniques the hollow block of carving size and shapes are carved from the wood of mango and shisham tree these blocks are then carved with animal skin and most commonly goat skin and finish the process of making the instrument question number 7 consider the following statement with regard to different techniques of handicraft in india 
Bandani is a type of tie and dye textile where cloth is tightly tied into many small knots uh, that form a design. They there is evidence of the use of this tech, ancient technique even presently in Rajasthan and Gujarat. It is also popular in Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. A special kind of tie and dye that lead to ripples and wave like pattern in the fabrics uh, is called Laharia. This is usually made in Jaipur and Jodhpur. Another type of dye, tie and dye is called Ikhat which is also known as the the resist dyeing method. In this method, the resist uh, dyeing of yarn is repeatedly applied before the cloth is woven. The major center of this work are Telangana, Odisha, Gujarat and Andhra Pradesh. Question number 8. Consider the following statement with regard to utensil making among the Tatheras community in Punjab. The utensil may be manufactured for ritual or utilitarian purpose both for individual and community use on special occasions such as wedding or at temples. The traditional technique of manufacturing brass and copper utensils of the Thetheras is believed to be the beneficial for health. The metals used in this process are copper, bronze and alloys are, are recommended for medicinal purpose in several Ayurveda texts. It was patronized and encouraged by Maharaja Ranjit Singh in the 19th century. The utensils are of wide variety like those used in household and com community kitchens of Sikh Gurudwaras. Question number 9. In the context of handicraft of India, consider the following pairs. Chanpatna toys. Chanpatna toys are a particular form of wooden toys that are manufactured in the town of Chanpatna in the Ramnagara district Karnataka. This traditional craft is protected as a geographical indication under the World Trade Organization admit, administered by the government of Karnataka. These toys were built on the smooth quality and bright colors of the product that were safe to handle. The manufacturers of toy in Chenpatna goes back at least 200 years according to most accounts and it has been traced to era of either Ali and Tipu Sultan in the 18th century. Kondapalli toys. Kondapalli toys are the toys made up of wood in Kondapalli of Krishna district, Andhra Pradesh. It is also known as Bommala Kolvu. It has been granted geographical indication tag. The artisans who make the toys were referred to as Arya Kshatriyas also known as Nakar, Nakar Shalu. The art is believed to be ancient with mythological roots originating from the Mukha Rishi who obtained the knowledge from the Lord Shiva. The style of these toys is the mix of Islamic and Rajasthani art popular for their realistic expression. Nirmal toys. Nirmal toys the world famous traditional wooden toys that are exclusively made in the town of Nirmal in Al- Adilba district of Telangana, India. Nirmal art is 400 year old rich tradition that encompasses soft wooden toy and attractive painting as well as furniture occupying its pride and place in the larger world of handicraft. The style of Nirmal toy is a beautiful assimilation of Indian and Mughal art. It used ajanta floral and combination of Mughal miniature. The material used is soft wood and enamel colors. Paniki and white sander is the local available soft wood, easy to shape and give perfect finish. The enamel colors give the toy the shine. Question number 10. Consider the following statement with regard to bhag and the craft. Bhag and the craft are practiced in Madhya Pradesh. It in this hand block printing technique. The cloth used is cotton and silk which are subjected to treatment of a blend of corroded iron filling alum and alizarin. On completion of the printing process, the printed fabric is subjected to repeated washing in the flowing waters of the river and then dried in the sun for a specific period to obtain the fine luster. In bhag and the craft, Geometric floral composition are printed on the fabric. It is the Andy craft practiced in Bhagdhar district or in Madhya Pradesh, India. Its name is derived from the village Bhag on the banks of river of the 
भाग ली हुआ द टेक्निक यूज वेजिटेबल रेड एंड नेचुरल ब्लैक नेचुरल कलर्स एंड टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द रिवर एंड एफेक्टिव यूज ऑफ द कलर्स रिजल्ट इन भाग प्रिंट्स इन अ यूनिक आर्ट फॉर्म द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व प्री प्रिंटिंग प्रिंटिंग एंड पोस्ट प्रिंटिंग 